My interest in this particular project, Mr. Speaker, has everything to do with me being the line minister for sustainable development, where we have a vested interest or, or, or stake in the environmental management and environmental conservation component of this project. Mr. Speaker, there are two particular components that I want to touch on very, very briefly. One has to do with coastal resilience strengthening. Under this unleashing of the Blue Economy um, Project, Mr. Speaker, the government of St. Lucia will have at, it, have at its disposal resources to engage in coastal resilience strengthening. Most, if not all, of our coastal villages are below sea level. And with the continued rise in sea level, Mr. Speaker, not only is it posing an existential threat to those small villages and coastal communities, but we are witnessing on a daily basis the livelihoods of people literally being washed away by, by, by rising sea levels. The World Bank, the Caribbean Development and other agencies have attributed to climate change the loss of GDP in the Caribbean somewhere between 2 and 3 percent annually. Somewhere between 2 to 3 percent annually, Caribbean islands are losing their GDP as a result of climate change and all the issues that come with climate change. In the case of Belize, Mr. Speaker, if we were to look at regionally, the government of Belize or Belize um, is conceding somewhere between 7 to 9 percent of GDP to climate change. We cannot reverse climate change, but what we can do, Mr. Speaker, is we can adapt. And adaptation takes a lot of resources. And small island developing states like St. Lucia and the rest of the OECS are at their wit's end trying to get monies to combat the challenges and to put up um, against the effects of climate change. So mitigation is another word in the climate change lexicon where you are encouraged to plant trees or do things that will reduce carbon emission um, that contributes to global warming. So, for some countries, the mandate really is mitigation and adaptation. But for us, Mr. Speaker, given the fact that we do not contribute much to global warming by way of greenhouse gas emission, adaptation is a must, and it is very costly. And the member for Labry, using the analogy that he used earlier on, puts it very succinctly when he says that we are not responsible for climate change. What we contribute to global um, Greenhouse gas emission is almost negligible, but yet we are the ones facing the brunt of climate change. And how do we see climate change manifesting itself in our region, Mr. Speaker? We are seeing more powerful hurricanes visiting the shores of Caribbean territories. And in the space of half an hour to 45 minutes, you can move from being a vibrant economy where the, the projections are encouraging to literally being wiped away in the space of no time. And that is what we mean for those of us who have been able to attend the international meetings presenting an argument for seeds. That is what we mean when we speak about the existential threat that climate change poses to our small vulnerable economies. So coastal resilience strengthening is a must. And we have to begin to invest in sea defenses. We saw, there's a perfect example in Denry South, Mr. Speaker, where the government at the time, somewhere between two, 1997 and 2006, saw the need very early to build the, that, that seawall to shield the, the, the residential village of Denry from wave action um, from the Atlantic Ocean. And the same is true for a number of coastal villages in, in, in this country. So, Anytime we are able, Mr. Speaker, to get the resources to help us provide that comfort level for our people, we should make good, Mr. Speaker, on tapping into those resources to give our people a much better standard of living. This resolution sits well with SDG 14, or what we call Sustainable Development Goal 14. Mr. Speaker, sometime in 2015-16, the United Nations General Assembly 
embarked on or established a series of goals that all members of the UN were supposed to work towards. And they were known, the, collect, the collective grouping of goals were known as the Sustainable Development Goal. This particular resolution sits well with SDG 14, and the Sustainable Development Goal 14 speaks to conserving and sustainably using the ocean, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. For a very long time, the Caribbean and small island states have resorted to traditional economic models to provide for their people. In a global environment, Mr. Speaker, where it has become increasingly difficult to raise revenue and to grow your economy, we have to look to non-traditional forms of economic activity to stay afloat and to continue to provide basic services to our people. It's against that backdrop we saw the introduction of programs like the Citizenship by Investment Program. But we can't stop there because that particular program, along with other programs that may have been resorted to by countries not only in St. Lucia but elsewhere, are having their challenges. But here we are in the Caribbean, and we have our, at our disposal a vast expanse of ocean, a resource that we have not been able to tap into beyond the traditional forms of, of, of livelihood like fishing and tourists on the beach. We, we, we are being told now, and the research, the research is showing, Mr. Speaker, that the oceans and the seas around us have a lot more potential than we have been able to explore to generate revenue and opportunities for our people. And it is against that backdrop, the World Bank working collaboratively with small island states like St. Lucia saw the need to embark on this project for the Caribbean where we can make good on the blue economy. The blue economy, Mr. Speaker, is part of the economic jargon which speaks to the sustainable use of ocean resources for economic growth. But the situation we have in St. Lucia at the moment is that the marine space, Mr. Speaker, is shared by a number of agencies and interests. The Ministry of Agriculture for the, first, for the Fisheries Department, Mr. Speaker, they have a stake in the blue economy and the marine environment. The Ministry of Tourism, Mr. Speaker, given the number of beaches we have on the coastline, they to have a stake in the marine environment and the seas and the oceans around us. And for us in the Department of Sustainable Development, Mr. Speaker, our interest has more to do with environmental management from a marine standpoint than being a, a, an agency that would devise policy for, for maximizing economic returns from the use of that particular natural resource. How have, have we been able to go about it as a country, Mr. Speaker? We have formulated a National Ocean Policy and Strategic Action Plan coupled with our Coastal and Marine Spatial Plan, Mr. Speaker. And this is supposed to support our transition to a blue economy where we will be looking to link economic viability to the continued health and vibrancy of our national oceans and coastland areas. There's a new term that has entered the discourse, Mr. Speaker, the BBNG biodiversity beyond national jurisdictions. We know that there are demarcations in the ocean where you have waters belonging to St. Lucia, and beyond that, they say um, when, when, when vessels navigate, they happen to be in international waters. But even in international waters, Mr. Speaker, you have rich marine biodiversity. And that marine biodiversity of which the international conservationists, conservationists speak, Mr. Speaker, has implication for the global health of the marine environment, and we must have a stake in it. So I'm extremely pleased to see that the government is engaging the World Bank, Mr. Speaker, to get the resources to make that happen. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister in presenting the resolution spoke to the benefits that can be derived from a waste management perspective, and that I welcome as the line minister responsible for the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority. Mr. Speaker, through dedicated research, a plastic waste national level quantification and sectoral material flow analysis 
the development of a national source inventory on plastic pollution and marine litter and other initiatives are being developed in St. Lucia so as to inform our marine litter management action plan. Marine litter is one of the biggest environmental problems facing the world today. Marine litter is one of the biggest environmental problems facing the world today. Whatever we do inland, Mr. Speaker, can easily be reflected in our oceans. And when we do not dispose of our plastics and other forms of litter in a responsible way, inland, Mr. Speaker, it is reflected in what, by what you see um, in the seas, on the beaches, and in the oceans, as alluded to by the member for Chozel. Plastic waste makes up approximately 80% of all forms of marine pollution. And every year, Mr. Speaker, the United Nations Environmental Program and other like agencies, every single year, have to be chiding developed countries as well as developing countries to take greater responsibilities for how they go about disposing their waste because of the adverse effect it is having on the, envi on the environment. So when St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, gets to tap into 18 million US dollars from the, on the, the UBEC project, this is money, Mr. Speaker, that will go a long way, a long, long way in ensuring that St. Lucia enhances its environmental management profile in the scheme of regional development. I would have made the point in my preamble that the project resides with the Ministry of Finance, Economic Development, and the Youth Economy. But for us in sustainable development, we have an environmental management and preservation stake in this particular project. And it is from that vantage point, Mr. Speaker, I lend support to the resolution and I commend the Prime Minister for, for carrying through a project that has been in the making for, for some time, of course, hoping that it will yield the desired results for the people of St. Lucia, and more specifically, those persons in our country who, who rely on the, the, the marine environment for their daily bread. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and this is my contribution to the resolution.